Good morning and happy Motivation Monday. I hope everybody had a great sales week last week. Uh, I will tell you, taking a look at the numbers, it seems like we did pretty dang well, not going to lie. Uh, last week, I was actually in Portland with Agent Services staff, uh, making sure we're delivering you the best quality support here possible at HCP. Uh, it's great to be back here in San Diego. No more dreary Portland rain, but it was kind of nice seeing, you know, some green things. Kind of threw me off my game. Uh, instead of the dry beaches, you know, they have lush forests, so it was a good change. This week's theme is really first impressions and strong introductions. All sales processes, they do have to start somewhere, and the introduction is so important. Uh, Zig Ziglar really has a great quotes when it comes to this, but I, I'm a pretty big fan of this one. Uh, it's your responsibility to make clients like you. If they like you, they will listen. If they listen, they will believe it, and if they believe, they will buy. Um, it's kind of Things we have to get across in the introduction is really that clients have to like you, trust you, believe in you, and feel you're a professional. And if you make a great, strong introduction, you're really going to knock a lot of those out, and your whole sales process is going to be easier. And that's what we're going to go over today. Um, so, happy Motivation Monday. We got a few new people on the phone, so kind of this is the process that we go through. Uh, so, we start with the tip of the week. So, it's just going to be some update information there. Uh, we go through HCP trends as well, and then in the end, we will end with the sales technique, which is introductions. So tips of last week, just to go through it again, there is the NHIC with that Chrome works best. So if you're writing NHIC policies, uh, carryingbenefits.com, try to use Google Chrome. If you haven't downloaded it, I'd recommend it. It's a really great browser. And the second is to stay on top of your licenses, uh, contact agent services if you need help. When I was in Portland there, I did see a few people contacting and updating information, so that's, that's good. That's very important that you guys are staying on top of that. We have some downtime now between now and the next open enrollment, so let's really take advantage of that. So this week's tips of week, uh, it's a little different. It's from the retention team. Uh, so I was talking with them. We were going through trends on why people are going through and canceling uh, with NHIC. And so I thought we would kind of go through and address a few of them, make sure that we are all, all on the same page with that. Uh, I have a personal belief with sales. When you set clear expectations up front, your clients will retain the, the policies longer. And let's be honest, we get paid off of it too. So longer the client keeps the plan, the better for us. So the first one uh, with NHIC. So we're taking a look at the interim care. So the short-term medical product is first off, the doctor office visits, they are a $50 first dollar benefit. So they're not a copay. Uh, they say they hear a lot that people use the word copay with it. It's not. Uh, so keep in mind, it is a $50 first dollar benefit. So they go to the doctor, they pay for it. We'll give them the reimbursement at the end for the $50 there. Uh, so don't let your clients think they only go to the doctor and they only pay $50. Uh, they're not going to be too happy. But keep in mind, too, with the doctor's office, it is that Aetna Open Choice PPO network, and with those NHAIC uh, claims that we found out, there's a huge savings on there. So it's still fairly inexpensive. A second really common uh, one that they say they get is people call up saying that they were told there was prescription benefits on the interim care. Uh, keep in mind, there are no prescription benefits. Uh, so, But also with short terms, pre-existing conditions, uh, they're excluded and on almost every short term out there. So even if there are prescription benefits, they don't work for prescriptions your client would currently be on because that's a pre-existing condition. Uh, so the interim care doesn't have any. They don't make a lot of sense on short term plans. I know clients like them and ask for them, but just keep in mind prescription benefits on that. That it is charged monthly. Um, this one kind of threw me off. Keep in mind with all NHIC policies, it is a monthly charge. So every month I'll get charged on that. Uh, instead of one lump sum up forward, uh, nope, it is going to be a continuous monthly charge. And your client can call anytime and cancel. As long as they call 10 days before their next draft, they're good to go. Um, the next one, I've actually received a lot of questions on this last week. So keep in mind, short terms, they are not major medical. Uh, they do not have the minimum essential coverage benefits that's needed to be considered a qualified health plan by the government. Uh, there are those 10 things that all health plans have to have, the MEC, the 10 MECs for major medical. Since short terms are not MEC plans, they're not qualified health plans or QHPs, 
they can sell them, we can sell them outside of open enrollment. They can have a start date at any time. Uh, so they're not major medical, meaning yes, your client would get that tax penalty. And the last one here <clears throat> is the association package. Uh, people are just kind of confused about this in general. There are a lot of benefits that come with that association package. Uh, your client gets that call MD where they can call the, the doctor for uh, about a $35 charge, unlimited consultations, where that doctor on the phone can actually do prescriptions. Uh, there's family discounts, there's discounts for, at retail stores, there's also discounts at theme parks. So this is part of the plan, this is part of the package that comes with it. Uh, there's a lot of great benefits. It's actually a really good selling feature. If you need any help going through and remembering what's on it, email me, let me know. I can go through and give you a pretty good rundown. I have a lot of good agents who sell the plan, honestly, pretty heavy on that association package and they do a pretty good job with that. So these are the big five that I heard from the retention team last week. Just make sure that you're doing them all right. Set your client good, good standards up front. If they have a good expectations, they're going to hold the plan longer. So the second part here is we're going to take a look at trends. Uh, it was a really great sales week. So first off with major medical, as usual, there hasn't been a lot of change. Uh, you know, we're just running with it and selling whenever we find the SEPs. So whenever they have a special enrollment period. With the short term, there was a pretty good increase in short term, really healthy growth last week. We had about a 25% increase in sales in short term. It's still about 80% NHIC, 20% golden rule. Uh, a majority of it actually came from Florida. So if you're in Florida, you had a pretty good sales week last week, I'm going to guess. Uh, Florida seemed to knock it out of the park. If you are not licensed in Florida, maybe take a look at that. There seems to be a lot of business coming in. Huge increase in accident as well. So the accident policies here. Uh, so a large increase in the AxiMed. Uh, also Healthy America. And then some of that time insurance company accident medical expense with plan enhancers were coming through. As far as critical illness goes, there was no real change. Uh, it was actually, the change was one policy less than the week before it was sold. So the critical illnesses are still holding pretty strong. And in the end, there is a monstrous increase in dental. A absolute knocked it out of the park, uh, about double the week before. A lot of golden rule is being sold, just a ton, and also star mount. Again, mainly in Florida, though. So a lot of dental was going out in Florida. So. Here we go, good increase in short term, good increase in accent, good increase in dental. That means you guys are creating those packages for your clients, changing the mindset of, you know, your client probably lost a package of group benefits, so let's create that package that they can have here, uh, maybe until even next open enrollment when we can go through and sell major med if that's what's appropriate for them. So we have two series that we're going to start going through now. Um, the first series is going to be a solid breakdown of the, the four-step sales process. So a solid breakdown of the introduction, the fact-finding, the presentation, and the close. We're really going to try to dig deep um, on every one of the four sets so we can really you know, start thinking more about our whole sales process and maybe uh, making some small changes to increase our closing percentage there. The second one that we're going to be doing too is we're going to be running a um, series of common sales mistakes. So this week we're going to take a look at the introduction, kind of that was emailed out, not the steps in the introduction, breaking that down. Next week we're going to take a look at five common sales mistakes and small things that you can do to, to overcome them or small tweaks that you can do to your process as well. Uh, salespeople, we easily overthink everything. So we're hopefully just going to do some small things and not try to change the world on you here because obviously you have a pretty good idea what you're doing, uh, but we just want to help you improve a little bit. So today we're going to start with the introduction. Uh, kind of as the sound of music said, we're going to start at the very beginning, the good old Rogers and Hammerstein introduction there. So introduction is hugely important part of your process. You literally have 30 to 40 seconds to grab the attention of your potential client and for them to decide that they like you or not. As we originally talked about in the sales process, we mentioned that clients have to think that, that you're fun to work with, uh, that you're a professional, that you're knowledgeable, and you have their best interests in mind. And you have about 30 to 40 seconds for your client to determine that. Um, so again, if the client has to like you, trust you, believe in you, and feel that you're professional, throughout that whole sales process, if you can knock some of those out right in the beginning, there's gonna be less struggle at the end. So your client really needs to know all those so they can buy from you. The, the introduction, 
uh, the you, the wow factor, it's really broken up into four steps that are there. The first is a quick introduction of you. Uh, the second is the why you're calling. Uh, this person picked up their phone, why should they care? The next is the with them, the what's in it for me or your benefits statement. Uh, not only the why you're calling, but why they should care. As we talked before, you know, we are selfish creatures. We care most when something is uh, a direct benefit to us. So this is going to be the reason why they listen. Uh, really, the WIFM is, is super important because it gives them the real reason they should care, the real reason why they're going to pay attention to you. And then the last step in the process is uh, what, what are the next steps? What are the process? So we kind of break things down. People don't like to have the unknown. It makes them uncomfortable. So really what we're doing is, you know, the introduction to yourself, the why they're calling, the with them, and then explaining what you're going to do. And the nice thing is with the process and the next steps that you can explain uh, that, you know what, I'm going to be closing you. So the first step is the opening call or dialogue with your prospective client, yeah, you know, it's your introduction. So it seems simple, but you need to grab the client's attention and make them want to keep speaking with you. You don't want to blend in like everyone else who's calling, you know, because depending on what the lead source is, there may be a few other people calling. You know, you want to stand out. You want to be original. You want to be fun, but yet professional. Don't overthink it. Be you, but be an ear grabber. Uh, like I said before, you have that 30 to 40 seconds to grab their attention, and first impressions count for a lot. Uh, if you can imagine, I'm sure you've had your phone called a lot, picking up your phone and having somebody just born and unenthusiastic. Would you talk to them? No, not at all. I'll tell you, I won't. It bores me, our conversation's done. If this is a cold call, do be careful uh, to do a full media introduction because uh, that can give you the signals for your client to, to hang up or not, so be careful with that. So I recommend using an unexpected pleasantry uh, asking for the person. So here's an example, like, hi, is John there? Oh, this is. Hi, John, thanks for picking up the phone or thanks for taking my call. This is more interesting in diving right in in the first 10 seconds of what you're there for. Uh, this sets the tone for the call and actually right away gives a bit of uh, a set at ease for your client. Obviously, you're going to do the whole introduction of who you are and whatnot, but just try to have the attention grabber. You know, thanks for picking up the phone. Thanks for taking my call. Something different. Uh, with a cold call, you don't want to give them an out, though. So a common cold calls mistake would say, hi, John, do you have a minute? No, or asking how their day is, that can be, that can kill your process right away, just to let you know. Uh, the chances of someone giving you something negative right away, uh, so don't always start with a question. When you're giving the client a question, you're going to give control back to them right away. Um, so don't ask how they are. It's really just doing something different, something throwing them off, something that makes you stand apart, that they're sitting there like, what, who is this person? Why are they talking to me like that? So that's the first part, it's just an unexpected pleasantry for your introduction. So not even saying who you are yet, it's just kind of throwing them off. The second step is really going to be more the why you're calling. Uh, this step is more of a formality. Uh, it's a way to say your name and the company and what you're doing and why you're calling. Keep in mind with leads, a lot of them put their information online to be contacted. Uh, they went to a lead development site, they're learning about something, 90% of the time they clicked a box box asking somebody to contact them. Uh, they're asking for someone to call them, someone to reach out. So yes, give your name your company um, if you're affiliated with one. Don't be long-winded. Uh, keep in mind people are still deciding right now if they like you. Uh, you want to be cheery here and energetic and I also tell you, dang it, smile when you're making these calls. Smile. Uh, you'd be surprised how much different a smile is when you're on the phone comparatively. Uh, so some tips on making just that part easy. If you do not have a mirror by you in your, or in your office, I recommend getting one when you're calling and look into that mirror when you're dialing. I'm not joking. It seems stupid. It seems kind of weird. It will make a large difference. If you look in the mirror and you look grumpy, you sound way more grumpy than you are. Uh, my office actually has a wall of mirrors, so I can make eye contact and just helps you sound a little more powerful there. And then also lean forward in your chair. Uh, that's going to create more energy in your call. So if you're leaning forward, you have that good smile, you're creating eye contact with yourself in the mirror, it's kind of like you're working face-to-face -face with your client. It's really going to help. So again, uh, be here, be clear to the point. So, hi, I'm Agent Steve. I'm with AHCP, giving you a call about your request for health insurance. It's like quick and to the point. So you kind of threw them off a little bit. You're telling them who you are, and then you're going to move on to 
the what's in it for them, the most important part of your introduction process, actually. Uh, this, for me, is what your whole introduction is really going to be around. It's why should they care about talking to you? Uh, again, we are, we are self-centered creatures. I want to know why you're on the phone. Why are you talking to me? What is going on? What can you do for me? Um, remember, if you've done your own brand, uh, like we talked about before and decided who you want to work with, this step is actually a lot easier. You can specialize your benefit statement, uh, the why they should care, and you know you can kind of make their ears burn almost. You know what what can you do for them? Do you have unique benefits? Can you reduce costs? Can you offer peace of mind? What can you do? Usually, this is kind of a form of a question um, at this point. Uh, and uh, like I can save my clients on average around 10% on their health insurance costs. Is that something you're interested in? Or You've been declined in the past for insurance. We have a short-term medical product that's guaranteed issue. Let's learn more about that. I have a product that can help protect your family for financial security if, when the big what if happens. I mean, these are things that your clients pay attention to. This is what stands you apart. Uh, that's kind of why we talked about branding. It makes this whole benefit statement better. You have it, you have it loaded down. I recommend writing down the benefit statement that you have. So you can use it over and over and be quick. Uh, also helps depending on what the lead source is because you want the client to listen to you. Uh, in health insurance, the thing is that there is so much variance on need. And that's why it's easier when you're working with that one specific type of client or mainly trying to work with that one specific type of client like what we talked about. Because that's going to bring their attention in a lot more. Um, so it is the WIFM. This is the biggest part of your call. You want to have something that is their attention grabber at this point, because you already did that introduction where you kind of threw them off, you told them who you are, and then give them the why. Why should they care? And then at this point of your introduction, it can really go two ways. Um, so one is if they don't have time, you're calling them and they're in the grocery store. I always have that luck and you need to set an appointment or if they're ready at that exact point. Um, if they're ready, make sure you have everything up and going so you can go through that. The one call close is phenomenal. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier. You're not gonna sit there chasing leads, but yes, let's admit it, we're in sales. We are gonna have to do some lead chasing. That's okay. So it's really gonna be the, uh, the appointment setting. So one big thing that I find out with appointment setting is people aren't as, aren't as confident actually asking for the appointment, you know, setting it. Um, here's a good hint for the appointment setting for you. Give them two options for a time and date that you're going to talk to them again once you find out, you know, when are you available? Well, I'm available next Friday. Here are your two options, this or that. If you give them multiple options, it's really hard for people to make a decision. Always give them two and use the word or. So I have this time or that. And then let them pick it. Uh, so they feel like they're partially in control, but really you have those two times available. Uh, also ask them to give them a pen and Ask them to grab a pen and paper and then listen for them to do it. Uh, that's a pretty big one. If you ask somebody to do something on the phone, guaranteed they'll do it. If you're not using grab a pen and paper, take down my information and time, start doing that. Uh, it's a really easy small tweak to do and it's going to help increase your show percentage as far as it goes with appointments greatly actually. Um, I used to do that too with mine. When I first started asking them to grab a pen and paper and take my information down, I had about a 40% increase in my show. And then I had them repeat it back because uh, when people ask me to grab a pen and paper, sometimes I don't exactly do it. Uh, so if you ask me to repeat it back, then you can have them write it down, kind of hold them a little bit. Also have them write down what you can do for them. So why should they show up? Because if I find a piece of paper in my office that has just a name and a phone number, I'm going to be a little lost. So have them also write down what you can do for them. Uh, so are you helping them save money uh, so they can sleep better with financial security with insurance? Uh, whatever the with them is, Make sure they write it down so that you, they'll actually show up. Again, if they are ready now, you better be ready to go. Don't start dialing unless you have your sales process done, you have your scripts out, everything's organized. Um, you need to explain what the next steps in your process are if they are ready to go. Um, so my next steps in my process, how I did it, you know, when I had somebody on the phone and, you know, I went through, introduced myself, made sure that they had the time is, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'll ask you a few questions about your current health insurance situation and your health insurance needs. Together, what we're going to do is we're actually going to customize a plan uh, that's going to best suit your needs. 
From there, we can make any changes that are needed, but as long as you like what we hear, we're actually gonna go through and get you applied for the health plan today. So, something quick, something like that. I explained what the next steps are. Hey, I'm gonna ask you questions. We're gonna make a plan together. In that plan, hey, guess what? You have the power to make any changes that you need. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close you. So that is what it's gonna be for the next part of your sales process. Explain, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fact find, I'm gonna present, and I'm gonna close. What this actually does is it sets your client at ease. They know what's going on. Uh, it's extremely important to do that because if not, people are will be in their minds on the phone, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? There's a bit of anxiety. You don't want your client to have anxiety. You want them to know this is clearly what's gonna happen. You sit back, you enjoy the ride. I'm a sales professional. You're gonna like me, you're gonna trust me, you're gonna believe in me, and everything's gonna be great. So kind of just a review of the process of the introduction again. Uh, so it is that four-step process. So that kind of, that brief introduction, so kind of throwing them off. Uh, it's just gonna be the why you're calling, so you know, what you're doing, the with them, so what's in it for me, and then the process or the next step. So here's a kind of an example. So hi, it's John there. Hi, John, thanks for taking my call. It's Steve, I'm a health insurance agent here at HCP, giving you a call because you've requested to be contacted about health insurance. What I do here is I save my clients on average about 15% on their health insurance. Does that sound good to you? Awesome, it does great. Well, John, here's what I'm gonna do. I'll ask you a few questions about your current health insurance situation uh, and what your expectations and a plan are. So together what we'll do is we're gonna customize a plan to best suit your needs. From there, we'll make any changes that are needed, but as long as you like what you hear, we're gonna go ahead and get you applied for that plan today, okay? All four steps, quick into one. I kept complete control of the whole conversation there, and the client is ready to go. These are recorded, just to let everybody know, and they are gonna be posted on the training area of the website. So if you wanna go through and listen to this again, highly recommend it, take down some notes, it's gonna be extremely useful. Now, if you do have any questions on anything that we went over today, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, it is training at hcpsales.com. It goes directly into the training box. I will be checking it all day. Uh, if you have a question, again, guaranteed about 15 other people have that question as well. If there's something you want me to cover next week or any tips that you want, feel free to reach out. That is the area that people have been using. It's been working pretty good. And what we'll do here is um, put some time this week. Start thinking about your introductions. What are you going to do to get your customers to like you, trust you, and feel you're a professional? I think this is a pretty great quote to start uh, the Monday with. So sales are contingent upon the attitude of the salesman, not the attitude of the prospect. So smile, make eye contact, kind of enjoy what you do. You're in health insurance kind of because it's fun, also because, you know, it's, that's what we do. Let me know if you have any questions. Reach out. Uh, you know, we had a lot of great questions last week, and thanks, everybody, and have a great Monday.